If you're watching this video between now and St. Patrick's Day, that means that St. Patrick's Day is just around the corner. Hi, I'm Jared Lendy, and today we are going to do a Chicago twist on the traditional corned beef and cabbage dish. So without further ado, let's go and make some corned beef and cabbage deep dish pizza. Okay, here are the things you'll need to make the corned beef and cabbage deep dish pizza. Two 28 ounce cans of diced tomatoes. A quarter of a head of cabbage. One pound of corned beef. 20 slices of mozzarella cheese. One teaspoon of Parmesan cheese. One teaspoon of cornstarch. One teaspoon of oregano. And finally, two pounds of deep dish pizza dough. Now, a lot of restaurants, bakeries, and grocery stores will sell it to you. However, if you don't want to go through the hassle of that, click this link right here and it will direct you to my video on how to make deep dish pizza dough. There is a difference. All right, let's get started. When you purchase cabbage, there are usually a couple of cabbage leaves that are wilted. So I just like to rip them off before actually cutting the cabbage. After that, Take your knife and cut into four pieces. Remember, we only need a quarter of the head of cabbage. And we also don't need the core. So just slice that off just like that. And begin cutting your cabbage into confetti-like pieces. Start by cutting it lengthwise, then turn it on its side and cut it that way also. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you can do the salt bay meme with it, you're good to go, and just set it aside for a later use. As for the corned beef, cut the slices into quarter inch strips. That way when you spread it out, each bite you take will contain the corned beef. After this, get your pan ready. This is a deep dish pizza pan. This is probably older than me. This is when my grandfather had his deep dish pizza place. You can use a cake pan if you want. They have plenty of them at Michael's. This one is a 14 inch pizza pan. To get your pan ready for the dough, just place some olive oil in it and use a paper towel to spread it around the pan, just like that. Next, place your dough in the deep dish pan and with your hands, press down on the dough and keep doing it from the middle all the way to the edges. It really helps if you have the actual deep dish pizza dough. Because of the oil content, it makes it easier to work with. Once it's spread out, it should look something like this, but remember, you're not done yet. While using your fingertips, push the edge of the dough upward and make sure that it's almost touching the top of the pizza pan. And just like that, you are now ready for the rest of the toppings. For deep dish, that means the cheese goes down first. Start with the outside of your pizza and work your way to the center. And fill the rest of the gaps with additional slices. Also, if you want to make it taste more like a Reuben, replace 10 of your mozzarella slices with Swiss cheese. After that, sprinkle on your cabbage. If you want for a little bit more of a kick, you can put a little bit of horseradish into the cabbage leaves. However, it's not necessary. Now's the time to start placing your corned beef on the pizza. And you might be thinking, Jared, this looks like a lot of corned beef. And you're right, it is a lot. But I like corned beef. You can use less if you want. When placing on your tomatoes, just make sure that you leave about a half to a quarter inch from the edge of the pan. That works. To finish it off, sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. To thicken the actual tomato sauce, I like to sprinkle a little bit of cornstarch on there. And to add a little bit more flavor, 
sprinkle a little bit of oregano on there. And just like that, you are finally ready for the oven. Now this just goes into a 400 degree oven for at least an hour. You might notice about halfway through the cooking process, some water's going to spout around the sides of the pizza. And that is because the corned beef and the cabbage is drawing out moisture. And that does not look good when it's on the pizza. So what I suggest is just taking a little bit of a paper towel and then just blotching around the side of the pizza to collect the water. And then just pop it back into the oven. Do this about two or three times during the cooking process. All right, it's been a little over an hour, so let's just check out the pizza. Oh my goodness, this looks beautiful. This is beautiful. I know this has already taken a lot of time, but we need to just wait 10 more minutes just so the pizza can cool down, and then we can break into it. There you have it. Hope you have an awesome St. Patrick's Day, and you learned a little bit about Chicago-style deep dish pizza. Until next time, I'm Jared Lundy, and this is the Kitchen Life of Jared, and other stuff. Don't forget to share, comment, and like this YouTube video. And make sure you're subscribed to Jared Landy Show.